So this is the scene I want to paint with the street coming through here and I like this white house, the cars, this tree here that's getting the white and the reflection on it. So I kind of want to get this composition here. I've got a four by six panel toned with cadmium orange and I want to see what happens if we have a bright orange underpainting with some muted earth colors. I'm going to be using James Gurney's Iron Triad that's Prussian blue, yellow ochre, and Indian red plus white. So I'm going to use a very limited muted color palette here against this super bright background and let's see what effects we can get. All right, so I'm mixing up a tint of white and Prussian blue for the sky color with this uh, one and a half inch brush. And um, this is gonna be the sky. I'm just gonna try and drop in the sky here and cover a lot of ground quickly. I'm gonna come in with a different brush. Just try to um, smooth that out a little bit. Let me get um, the ground plane and let me mix up a little bit of Prussian blue and some of that white, a little bit of Indian red. And I'm gonna basically use all of my primaries. So a little bit of red, blue, and yellow to create basically a gray color. Or the road needs to be lighter than that so add some more white And then I'm also going to drop in some light colors for sort of the grass and then we'll put in some shadows. So mix up some yellow ochre, a little bit of Persian blue. I think I need to wet my palette a little bit more just to make the paint a little bit more pliable. 
add some red to it. But that Indian red is very strong. But um, right now, the color of the grass is quite light and muted. And that upward facing plane is going to be pretty, um, pretty light colored. So I need a little bit more of that yellow in there. And this is a good, like a general, generic color. Uh, just a touch of water into that. And um, maybe a little bit of white. It's kind of the first nice day. And so uh, everybody's out driving their cars and walking their dogs, etc. I want to get a, um, a brown for some of the distant uh, trees in the background, so I'm going to mix some red and blue together. A little bit of white. And one of the things I want to do is I want to paint a little bit more opaquely. I want to paint a little bit more opaquely, so I need to make sure that I mix up enough paint here. It's kind of tempting sometimes to um, scrimp on the paint. Or add too much water like I probably did there. But I'm trying to get it a little bit darker. It does need to read as um, distant trees. Probably the darkest dark I can get with this color is just a mixture of the Prussian blue and the Indian red. So I'll mix some of that up. And that's a very good gray. So let me kind of drop that in. Yeah, actually it could be lighter. Get some more white. This is almost too close to the road color, but I can fix it later. And I just want to cover up this stuff here and we can go over in layers, you know. But I want to cover up and see, I like some of that glow that's coming through. Okay, very good. So just eight minutes of painting right now, but because I'm painting small and quickly, a lot of this stuff is happening quickly. Let me get in this um, palm tree, <laughs> palm tree, pine tree, that's over here. So I'm mixing again all three primaries but shading it towards green. It's not the focal point so I can keep it wet on wet. And it'll be a little bit melted, a little bit softer, edged. Let's darken it just a little bit, a little bit more blue into that, just to darken some of these areas. I'm looking for 
I'm going to lighten that a little bit with some white. But I'm looking for some darker shadows, and there's some here just along... some here along the way, sort of along the horizon line, some that go up like this, some bushes and things like that, maybe paint in some shadows, okay, that's looking okay, and are there any other darks, green darks? Not so much. Cool. Let's leave that at that. So I'm just kind of trying to cover the scene as best as I can. And um, I'm okay with covering up my drawing. But I want to cover it up as much as I can. And then we can go over and do more details. I want to mix sort of a brown for the um, the trunk of this tree that's sort of in the focal area and it needs to be kind of dark a little bit darker than that I think so again going to between my red and my blue and this is fairly decent There's a tree branch that comes across all of this. Add a little bit more blue just to make it come forward. Just to darken it. Focusing on those tonal values. There, that's, that's okay. Now let me get this, drop in this tree on this other side. It's happening right here. And I can see I'm still picking up a little bit of that white, and that's, that's okay. I don't mind it blending, but um, I can correct all of this stuff. And I'm going to lighten that up and drop in um, just some of these other tree trunks down the way. A little bit lighter as we go back because of atmospheric perspective. I'm trying to use a big brush so that I don't get too fiddly.
There's actually a tree up in here too. Nice. I think I want to use some of that color to shade just a little bit more blue and a little bit of red trying to get something close to a purple and we'll start dropping in some of these shadows across the street of the trees Okay, I want to drop in the highlight on this house. I'm going to use pure white because this is my focal point. So I'm just going to come across like this. And then after that, that's my brightest bright. So I'm gonna tint down everything else with some blue for the side that's in shadow. Pick up some of the gray I had before, a little bit of red to, down, to tone that Prussian blue down. The Prussian blue is really great in a tint. It looks really nice. I'm just going to suggest some of these other houses. I'm going to kind of fill this house area with gray and then we can kind of detail it later. And this house closer to us is blue, so I'm gonna add more blue to that gray mixture. And... Come across like this. Cool. Let's put in the roofs. Um, they're a little bit brown, so I'm going to mix more red and yellow into my pool of gray. 
a little bit more yellow, a little bit more red. Brown's essentially an orange, a grayed out orange. Add some white. Because we're painting opaquely, every, every mixture is gonna have white in it. I maybe could have waited to paint this tree in. And actually, for our main focal point, its roof is, I don't know, kind of like a mixture of yellow ochre and white. Add just a little bit of blue and red to it to gray it down. I need a smaller brush. I want to paint with a larger brush, but I don't know if I can do it accurately. Just a little bit more white into that. See, I have a tendency to add too much water to my mixes. There we go. And it's painting the chimney here. Yeah, okay. Actually, this part of the house is brick. Great. I'm gonna look, make a little bit more of a red, reddish mix, maybe a little bit more yellow into it, and drop in like some other areas of brick right here. This is a brick. And yeah, that helps, I think, create some variation. Then I'm gonna lighten that up quite a bit for this house here. I want to wait for the sky to dry and then I will um, come over the top of it with some dry brush to put in these trees and things and give it more texture. Let me start working on the car. It's essentially a deep bluish red. So I'm going to mix some Indian red and Prussian blue and that just almost gives me kind of a black so I'm going to still tint it towards red and I can see this mix is too watery There's a car over here. And there's kind of a light blue car right behind it. It's 
So I'm just going to kind of paint these blobs for now. And then refine them later. Car over here. Well, I have this black. Let me put in the windows. There's a window here. And here. And I'm going to grab some more of that. Maybe gray it down just a little bit. And that I'm hopeful that that contrast will read. Just drop in some hints of things here. Into the car. Come down here. Stuff like that. Just I'm going to try now bringing up the highlight side of this big tree that's catching the sunlight. And I'm going to use kind of a brownish color for the shadow side. But maybe I should blue that down a little bit. I think I will. And then I'm going to come over the top of this with highlights. I'll use that as a highlight for some of these trees in the background. Maybe dry brush it.
we'll just drop in some color there. I know it's standing out, but I'm gonna paint over it with, uh, I'm gonna paint over that with some trees in a second. Let's work on highlighting this tree in the foreground here. I'm gonna use a lot of white and some yellow ochre. Everything I put down. Got to add a lot of water, or rather, I got to add a lot of paint to keep this. Once you're using a small brush like this, I find it hard to keep paint on the brush, so I have to go back and dip in pretty sporadically, pretty frequently. <laughs> uh, I can't talk. a branch that kind of curves around here. This comes out in front, crosses over. It's hard for me to keep my paint fluid. Crosses over. Shoots out this way. And then let me put some shadows under that. And actually there's branches that shoot out down here too, that are just under the light. That's cool. Let me highlight some of these other trees, but I'm gonna use a, mix, a mixture that's dulled down, maybe put a little bit of red into that. to highlight some of these other trees. Like so. Okay, well, 
What are we going to do? Kind of in the ugly phase. Let me drop in some of these trees in the background. Indian red. Lots of yellow ochre. A little bit of white. These trees are like full on getting sunlight. Use some more blue in there. Add a little bit of shadow. This was probably a mistake, but hey, we make mistakes. I think what I want to do, I just want to dry brush some of that. I want to dull it down with a little bit of blue. So I'm mixing in a blue with this red and yellow, getting kind of a dull, but not too dark brown. Still putting some white into it. And I'm gonna switch back to this medium size flat and just put it on the tips of the brush. Let's see, can I? There we go. Create some of this texture. Yes, this is what I'm after. There's no way that I can paint all that fine detail. This is that spot I said I would paint over because there's just scrabble and brush back here and trees sticking out, but it's not the focal point. I have the same kind of thing happening in here. That needs to be lighter though. Mix in some more white. Keep the brush dry so that I can kind of scrub it on. I create this texture like this, see that? And I can paint over this. I can reinforce these lines. I know I probably should have put this on in the background, but I didn't think about it. But this kind of creates your depth. Cool. Like that. So I need to come in with sort of a darker green, muted down a little bit. Use some red, some blue for basically a foreground. This is too dark foreground grass, grassy area that we're going to paint. A fence over. I'm gonna dry brush that here. Create some texture. Cool. All right, I wanna try and Mix up sort of a muted brown, maybe similar to the color we used for those trees. 
it needs to be a little bit darker for this fence. So more blue, more red. And go back to a bigger flat brush. And look at this. Look how easy this is. Great. Okay. Let's work on the car some more. I need a dark dark that's going to be Prussian blue and Indian red. Pretty thick paint. Come in. Paint the back window. Trying to just break it down into simple shapes. There's dark under here. And the darks are the tires. Okay. Lighten that up a little bit. Keep some red in it though. And now some of these shadows. This is more red. Gonna use quite a lightened down version of this gray for the reflection in the windows. And I'll lighten it up even more. Highlight on the roof. Okay, I like that highlight system. Let's do the same thing with this car here.
think this car needs a deeper shadow on the grass right here darker than that maybe Cover this up, add a little bit more yellow ochre into that, just to warm it up, and maybe lighten it up. Alright, I want to get back to my focal point. And I want to put in some shadows. So I'm mixing up some blue and white. And I just want to detail this house a little bit more. A little bit of red into that. There's some shadows cast by trees. Some shadows on the roof like that. And I want to darken the side of this foreground tree here. So let's come in with quite a bit of blue and red. Maybe it needs a little bit more blue in it. Now that's getting a little bit more form, you know.
and it's too red. But I'm playing around. I'm liking this I need to basically fix this area here and um, I think I don't want to deal with these cars so let me just kind of turn that into grass <laughs> and yes you can do that um, because I want to wrap this thing up soon so I kind of mix up a grass color And then I want to, you know, work on putting in some highlights as well. Okay, and then um, let's see, what should we do? What should we do? So I think we could enhance the, uh, we could enhance the lighting on the ground. So let's do that in the grass. So I'm gonna take some yellow ochre. I'm gonna take plenty of white. And let's drop this in here. That's not bad. Okay, I like that color. So let's look where there's Highlights versus where there's shadows. Drop that in. Cool. And I think then that will work for me. And then I think that we can um, drop in some highlights on the road as well so mixing up a gray that we already had add some yellow to it add some red some blue it needs to maybe be on the bluish side so mostly a combo of our red and blue. Come in with plenty of white. Let's see. That works. Maybe a little bit brighter, huh? A little bit more white.
okay? And there's always like little things I can touch up. I want to darken this side. And Pull that up, and then I likewise I need to sort of fix the front of this car. And then I always forget this, so I'm going to put it in right now. That edge, the shadow of the lawns or the grass to create sort of a... The fact that it's raised. It usually it casts a shadow of the curb. Okay, I could detail this more, but I think this is all I have time for. So this is what you get when you use muted colors on a brightly colored background.